Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just leave the bristlenose catfish and the peppermints where they were? So that's the whole point of this big move. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be continuing on from last week's video with moving fish around in the fish room. And we're actually going to start putting cichlids into their aquariums on this rack. So let's get into this week's video. As you can see, I've removed the gravel out of this aquarium and replaced it with some pool filter sand. And I've also put some pool filter sand in this aquarium here where the Neil Amprologus Brevis Sunspot are gonna go. So I'll have two shell dwelling fish tanks right next to each other. And in this tank, I'm planning to put a pair of Gilletochromus regani. Uh, they're basically a breeding trio actually, because they now spawn with one of their uh, fry, which is a bit weird, but that's what they do. So in this aquarium, I didn't put much sand, even though I'm gonna be having shell dwelling cichlids in this tank, the Brevis Sunspot. Uh, I found they hardly ever dug at all and don't need a lot of sand. So I uh, just put a thin layer in there that will give their fry some protection, uh, some camouflage because they're very hard to see on the sand, on, on the pool filter sand. This aquarium, however, because it's getting some Gilletochromus regani, has a lot more pool filter sand in it. Doesn't look like it right now because all the sand's pushed back at the back of the tank. But what I'm gonna do now is clean the sand. When I clean pool filter sand, sand that's been used in aquariums before, and it is actually quite dirty. It wasn't cleaned before putting it away in the container. So I'm gonna clean it now. And what I do is I clean it in the tanks that uh, they're gonna be in. Like there's no, absolutely no reason for me to clean it in a bucket, bucket by bucket, and then put it in here. I just use the aquarium as that container to clean it. So I'll turn the hose on and really dirty up the water. Now you don't wanna put the sand against the glass when you like rubbing, rub the sand against the glass with your hand, because you'll obviously scratch your tank. All I'm basically doing is stirring the sand up, uh, getting all the suspended particles in the water column, and then I'll siphon all this water out to the garden, and then do it again two or three times until the water's semi-clear, and that's how I clean pool filter sand or aquarium gravel. Uh, just use the aquarium itself. Then what I'm gonna do, put water from my system, my sump system, into this aquarium as well as fresh water. And then this tank will be ready for the Regani. And I'm gonna do the same on the Neo Lamprologus Brevis Sunspot Aquarium. Clean the sand out, put some water in from the sump system, some fresh water change water as well. These two tanks will be ready to go pretty much today. So um, I've got filter sponge that has been cycling in my sump for the last few months. So it's all ready to go. I don't have to wait at all. The only thing I have to wait for is for the uh, temperature of the water to, to warm up. That's about it really. As you can see, the water looks pretty murky right now. But like I said, I'm gonna fill the tank up and then drain it. Do this again, fill it up, drain it. And then we'll see how the water looks at that point, uh, if we'll do it a third time. But uh, we'll just have to play it by ear. So I just let this tank fill up now and uh, turn the hose off siphon it out, fill it back up, and it should be right to go. And then we'll repeat it on the Brevis Sunspot tank. So, slowly making room in the fish room for all these guys. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I just leave the bristlenose catfish and the peppermints where they were? Uh, you know, they were in their own tanks, um, and you know, I moved them into tanks that had nothing in them. Like, why didn't I just put the Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot in one of the empty aquariums, and put the Gilletochromus regani in another empty aquarium on the bottom row? Well, that's purely because heat rises in my fish room. Uh, the tanks on the bottom row are colder than the tanks on the middle row. These tanks right here are getting warm air from the air conditioner, uh, blown in by a fan that sits underneath uh, the air con to this side of the fish room, and that makes a huge difference. However, the tanks on the bottom row, again, are the coolest in the fish room, and these guys like warm water being directly in front of the fan that comes from the air con, they are warm and kept at 26 degrees. They're fine for the uh, cichlids. However, the tanks on the bottom row can get down to about 20 degrees. And that is obviously too cold for Af African cichlids from Lake Tanganyika, but it is fine, completely fine for bristlenose catfish to breed and spawn in. And that's why those guys are on the bottom row of tanks. The peppermint bristlenose, especially them, they really do like cold water and uh, they're in pretty much the coolest part of the fish room where they are in the tank there. And that's why I moved the bristlenose catfish out of these tanks and then into the bottom row rather than moving the cichlids straight into the bottom row. 
uh, it would have been uh, silly of me to do that because then I would have actually needed heaters on that bottom row of tanks. Um, these tanks up here on the middle row don't specifically need heaters because they are warm enough for cichlids. So that's the whole point of this big move. <laughs> so I could put cichlids in these tanks. Uh, the other reason of, as well is uh, viewing. I like to see the cichlids uh, interact and you know engage in their spawning activity and see um, them just being what they would, just looking what they would look like in the wild, uh, that natural behavior. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to just sit down on my chair at this level, at this height, uh, rather than having them in the bottom row tanks and me hardly ever seeing them and having to awkwardly um, look into the aquariums at a low, low uh, level near the ground. So uh, that's the other reason why I have the cichlids in the middle row rather than the bottom row. The bottom row lights, these guys here with the bristlenose catfish all in the bottom row, hardly ever turn their lights on. Uh, basically, I only turn the lights on if I'm doing, doing a water change. And now guys, I'm obviously finished filling this tank up, filling up the Neal Ampelagus Brevis Sunspot tank, um, murking up the water as much as I can with that uh, pool filter sand. So I'm now draining that aquarium. Uh, it, because it's got less pool filter sand, I only think I need to fill it back up one more time and drain it one more time. Uh, this aquarium though, where the Regani will be going, I think I'm gonna have to uh, drain it possibly uh, two or three more times to get it to a level where it's nice and clear. All right guys, I've now filled out both tanks twice and I'm beginning the second drain on both the tanks. And as you can see, probably, uh, actually on the camera, it's not as clear, but um, in the fish room, I can tell that this tank here is a lot more cloudy than the, where the Neolampelagus brevis sunspot are going to go. And that's again, because there is less sand in that tank than in this tank. So. That tank, I'll just drain it now and then fill it back up and that will be it. This tank, I might drain it, fill it back up and drain it once more, uh, just because I'm not happy with the level of cloudiness in the aquarium. So guys, I've filled up the Neal Ampelogus Brevis Sunspot tank to the halfway point with water from their system. And I'm also draining out this tank, which will be for the Regani. Uh, that's the final clean. Uh, the next time I fill it up, we'll be using, again, water from their, their system, from the sump system, and putting it in here, doing the exact same thing, filling it, filling it up to the halfway point, and then the rest of the water will be from my water change water, clean, fresh water for them. So again, won't be a big shock to the system when I pop them into their brand new tanks. All right, guys, so I'm starting to fill up the Dilibichromus Regani's brand new tank. Uh, the water, you can see, is coming from the sump system from this aquarium here, which just so happens to be the Regani tank as well. So I'm gonna be able to move the rocks out, catch all the Regani, pop them in here, and uh, we should be right to go in the next few minutes with Regani going straight into that aquarium. Because I am filling up the tank with water from their system, and I'm gonna to be topping up the rest of the water with water change water, and then popping in sponge filters from the sump, uh, it's just gonna be like they've just had a water change on their own tank. Uh, with the um, difference being that they're in a brand new aquarium on a different system. The next thing I'm going to do, you can see the tank there, that tank there that had the short fin albino bristlenose catfish fry in it. Uh, that's got water now from the sump system as well. Uh, just need to pop in some water, change water from my reservoirs. That's got reflake salt in it. And basically I've set up two aquariums in the one day uh, and transferred all the fish over to make way for fry and uh, to put in some adult fish that I intend to spawn in the coming months. There is a method to my madness and uh, just taking some time. I've started this at around 8 a.m. and it's now 1 p.m. and I haven't even started really doing the water changes for the week on the sump system or the rest of the bristlenose catfish tanks. So uh, it's taking some time, but we're getting there and I need to get it done because I need to move these fish around to make way for new fry and for new fish that I intend to breed. So guys, I'm filling up the Neon Lamprologus Brevis Sunspot tank with water change water from our water change reservoirs. I'm not gonna really do much more of an aquascape. Uh, these guys don't really need uh, rocks in their aquarium. I will add a few more. I've got one rock in there, as you can see, and that's just up against the sponge filter just to hold them in place because the suction cups are getting a little bit on and don't really adhere to the glass as well as I used to. So I'll probably pop in another rock or two in there and then I'll just grab the shells out of the Brevis Sunspot tank. The fish will go in their shells and then voila, this tank is 
done, ready to go. And this is the Gilleted Chromis Ragani tank. As you can see, it's got rocks in it already. I add the rocks first before filling it up because the volume of water the rocks will take up will overflow the tank. So add your rocks in first, obviously add your sand in as well, and then um, fill the tank up uh, so you're not overflowing it when you're adding the rocks. Right, so as you can see, the Brevis Sunspot tank is now full and I am now filling up the Gilidochromis Ragani tank and I'll have two spare tanks once I move these guys in. So what I'm gonna do now is catch the Neal Amprologus Brevis Sunspot, put them in their aquarium, and then obviously I'll catch the Ragani and put them in their tank. And here is the quick aquascape I did on the Gilidochromis Ragani tank. Nothing special, a couple rocks added in there, creating some little caves, nooks and crannies for the guys to uh, dig and spawn under and hopefully they'll be right at home in this aquarium. The Neal Amprologus Brevis Sunspot are in their brand new aquarium and I've had to put the fry in with the parents. Not usually, uh, there are some fry in here that are a little bit large to be in with their parents and if I had the room, I wouldn't be doing this. I'd be putting them in a different tank, uh, but I have to unfortunately put them with their parents for now uh, and um, that's because I just do not have the room in the fish room. The other thing is you can notice the male is moving out of the shell right now. Uh, these guys, the, the water is a little bit cooler in this aquarium than the rest of the system and that's because my water change reservoirs, uh, they don't receive as much warmth from the aircon as the rest of the system does, but it will equalize the room temperature. You can see they're swimming around for fry are fine, uh, so that's a good sign. And this is what the Gilidochromis Ragani tank looks like right now. Like I said in my November 2021 fish room update tour, there are far too many fish in this aquarium and I do intend to move the fry out of this tank into a four by two foot by two foot aquarium. When I was moving the Ragani into this aquarium, I was really trying to do it as fast as I could because I had a lot to do in the fish room that day. And unfortunately in my haste, I forgot that I meant to split the fry from the parents and before I knew it, it was just too late and I just wanted to get it done, so I just let it be. Uh, but these fry will be sold off very shortly and uh, the trio will be able to spawn in this aquarium by themselves without having to worry about defending their new spawns from the current fry that are in this tank. Again, not the most amazing aquascape you've ever seen, I'm sure. I uh, just wanted to get it done on the day. I will be adding more rocks to this tank uh, once I catch all the fry out of here. So it's all good. Uh, I wish I didn't do that, but yeah, again, in my haste, I just wanted to get it done on the day. And that day, uh, moving all the fish around in the fish room, I was actually in the fish room for over 10 hours. Uh, so uh, there was a lot to do. And anyway, that's what the Regani tank looks like now. So there you have it guys, part two of moving fish around the fish room to make way for some brand new fry and hopefully some new spawning activity from some new fish. Really hope you enjoyed these videos and found them informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.